Hello guys, welcome to another video of Elite Expertise YouTube channel. I'm Harika Bimwarku, practicing consultant pharmacist in Australia. I work as a clinical pharmacist, clinical pharmacist educator for Monash Health Hospital in Melbourne. I'm also one of the directors of Elite Expertise, which is an online training platform enables overseas pharmacists to uh, secure an exam called CAPS, Knowledge Assessment of Pharmaceutical Sciences. Uh, which enables an overseas pharmacist to practice as an intern pharmacist and then achieve a full registration in Australia. So uh, today is a very special day. So we've got Rose Ryu, uh, one of my colleagues uh, in front of us. So uh, it's been an amazing experience with Rose, working with Rose in a community pharmacy. So thank you so much for accepting our invitation, Rose. It's um, we are really honored. Uh, so we thought, you know, um, your community experience, you know, as a community pharmacist, you've got like you know, years of experience. And if you share some tidbits and all this, you know, what you've gone through and uh, how you've excelled as a community pharmacist in Australia, it would be very useful for our students because very soon they'll be practicing their internship in Australia. So um, let me introduce Rose. Uh, so Rose has been my colleague. Um, uh, in the community pharmacy when I, where I was working for a short term. So it has been very, very amazing working with Rose. Uh, he's got an immense expertise in community pharmacy practice and he's changed lives of many you know, patients in uh, reducing dose mismatches, drug drug interactions, um, talking to doctors about side effects and got, you know, he contributed in uh, creating a positive health outcome for the community. So Rose Drew, um, he graduated from Latrobe University, Bendigo, in the year 2005 from Australia. And then uh, by the year 2007, he's finished his internship. And then from then, he's been serving Australian community as a community pharmacist since 2007 as a fully registered pharmacist. He's worked in Victoria. Currently, he's working in a Victoria a community pharmacy. Um, he's also served Torres Strait and Northern Peninsula area in far north of Queensland. Um, so let's start uh, a discussion, um, Rose. So, um, so the first question is: uh, Would you suggest us like how can intern pharmacists grow their career and excel as an Australian pharmacist, specifically for overseas pharmacists, or you know, all, like all those intern pharmacists practicing in Australia and soon to be registered pharmacists? What are your suggestions for them to excel in Australian community practice? Is a lot of different aspects to it um i think community pharmacy is really good because we get the opportunity to be involved with the patients in a pretty ongoing and regular sort of basis so we get to develop those um, relationships with regular customers um which allows us to have a bit more of a picture of uh their general life and overall health and everything rather than just sort of looking at a particular uh, I like the expression that you sort of think about the whole of the patient instead of just the whole in the patient. Um, so it's it's good to sort of see people over time and sort of develop a bit of a relationship with them and get a sense of um, when they're trying new medications and things like that and, and what their expectations are and what, what their um, hopes are with their healthcare, I suppose, as well. Uh, it can be really handy being able to have a more um more of an ongoing relationship with some of the doctors around your community as well um obviously differing to uh, metropolitan settings and stuff where there are so many different doctors and things like that you, you don't not necessarily uh always see you know, many patients from the same doctors and sort of get a sense of um what what's going on in the community um yeah, yeah. I think, uh, I don't know, there's a lot to it. There's, it's, I think, a matter of sort of keeping an eye on what's going on uh, and looking at the opportunities there to sort of work not just in the pharmacy but also in the community as well. Um, some places where I've worked, we've had the opportunity to run little um, health uh, information sessions and things like that or... Uh, sometimes you can sort of, um, you know, go to different meetings and things like that with local uh, the health networks sort of thing. So you're sort of dealing with some of the doctors in the area, um, going along to as many, oh, not going along to different um, continuing professional development sessions and things can be really quite rewarding as well. Um, even sometimes some that are 
um, you know, pretty specific in their scope, like just talking about one new um, cardiovascular medication or a diabetes medication and stuff can still have the opportunity for you to sort of get to know other pharmacists and other doctors in your area and, and yeah, find out more about the community and, and how you can look after them. Yeah. Yeah, so it's, yeah, it's so rewarding as a community pharmacist mm. Mm. Um, yeah, because we really change lives. I mean, like, mm. I mean, like we contribute to their health care, which is, which is really rewarding. So mm. um, thank you so much. So, you know, we broke those old rules of just dispensing the medications mm. for the stickers, and then we've introduced the services in Australian community pharmacy practice. We went like beyond like what a definition of pharmacist would be from, you know, compounding mm. medications to like mm. you know, going into services. So what do you comment about that? What services do Australian community pharmacy provide and how we as community pharmacists played a vital role in you know, Australian healthcare system? Yes. Yeah. Well, I suppose um, some of the, the earlier ones um, would be things like home medication reviews where, where pharmacists sort of going to the patient's home um, you know, sitting down with them, going through all their medications in in their own environment can be really interesting, really rewarding. That's sort of one of the one of the major uh, or earliest, you know, non dispensing sort of tied um, services that pharmacists do, like vaccinations, immunisation. That's that keeps expanding um, in Victoria in particular, which is excellent because that allows us to sort of look after the community healthcare in another way. Um, there's, like, obviously there's, um, you know, the education aspects as well. It can be quite interesting as well. Um, and at the moment, or, or just in the last week or so, uh, they, in Victoria, they've sort of expanded things to run a little trial on in terms of um, pharmacists prescribing. Not, not like, whole um slather of things it's very specific but yeah yeah it's still quite um but you know a really nice time to be a pharmacist and sort of seeing all these different things happening yeah and being able to be a part of it yeah true so like you talked about accredited pharmacists home medication reviews where we go and you know sit with the patient and discuss about their problems with medications and suggest the best treatment and then we've been immunizing pharmacists as well like where we've you know um i'm just practice you know the immunization practice has been extending specifically in the victorian state and we also have these you know services like asthma education diabetes education mm -hmm. sleep apnea mm -hmm. so definitely um we definitely broke i mean like you know the old mm -hmm. style of just dispensing mm -hmm. but you know being that proactive pharmacist and we made our presence very important in the community mm -hmm. so yeah which is which is really good <laughs> so so, I mean, like, because I'm, I'm sure you've trained many interns, like, throughout your career, like, uh, as a community pharmacist, as a pre you've been preceptor for many interns. So I would mm -hmm. like to know your experiences with interns and how does it feel? And you're an intern yourself in 2007. Mm -hmm. So, and yeah. you're preceptor. So I wanted to know, like, your experience as an intern and how this internship fits on intern pharmacists to achieve that, you know, um, fully registered to become a general registered pharmacist mm. and practice mm. independently yeah. and how rewarding is it how how is like just i want you to throw the light on internship and all that mm. Mm. yes yeah it's it's really quite interesting i i felt um it, it was challenging certainly i did my internship in a, a pretty busy community pharmacy uh but there are a lot of advantages in that because we were busy i was exposed to a lot of different things which was excellent um we did a fair bit of compounding uh, that pharmacy had a fair bit of involvement in uh, looking after uh, uh, nursing homes and aged care facilities, so that that was a whole uh, other aspect to to practice beyond what you learn about in university. So it's, it's a bit different. Um, it was really good because uh, I did my internship, and there were several pharmacists uh, employed in that pharmacy, so I got to work with a range of different pharmacists who had. Uh, different ways of doing things and you know, I, could, I could learn a bit from each of them which was really quite good um yes yeah you know from pharmacists who were very much like the owner of the business were very much involved in the business and management side of things 
uh, there are a couple who, who really looked after the aged care facilities and, and web packs for community patients. Um, yeah, yeah, it, it's, it can be challenging, uh, but certainly very rewarding. I think um, working alongside a, a range of pharmacists as well, who are at different stages in their career as well. I had, you know, some young pharmacists, some who had been pharmacists for a long period of time and sort of had... Um, you know, lots of different ways of doing things and had sort of seen the profession change as well, which is quite interesting. Um, but yeah, there, there's, I don't know, there was something I could learn from everyone that I worked with. And I like to think that all of the um, pre interns and things that I've worked with over the years as well have all sort of all been different and all approached their, their learning and pharmacy differently, but all, um, I think, learned and, and done different things and being able to sort of, you know, find a good spot for themselves in the profession too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so do you have any anything to tell, you know, the new interns or student pharmacists, you know, how to excel mm -hmm. there, like, you mm -hmm. know, how to improve their knowledge and, you know, how to excel as a community mm -hmm. pharmacist in Australia? Yes, yeah. Um, look, um, there can be some really good opportunities whether it be nowadays, I suppose, in Facebook groups and things like that, for um, one aspect is the Pharmaceutical Society of Australia. They run a early career pharmacist um, group, uh, oh. which is open to interns, I believe, as well as um, newly registered pharmacists. So you can sort of, uh, you know, share ideas and thoughts with other pharmacists and, and get their advice on different situations and things. You can sort of see how different people have approached things or um, different challenges that other people have uh, come across in their day-to-day -to -day or, or in the broader uh, sense as, as things are changing. We pharmacists can be sort of at the front of uh, dealing with some of those challenges um, in terms of the expectations or things, um, you know, COVID was obviously challenging for everyone. But uh, yeah, I think community pharmacy um, as a as a whole uh, handled that really well. And yeah, yeah, um, yeah. It's about expanding knowledge and you know staying up Ooh. to date. And yeah, so any tips yes. and tricks yeah. for clearing the intern exams, like you know, intern written exam, intern oral exam? I know you've trained many interns. Mm, yeah, yeah. So, any secret tips from your side? <laughs> um, I would say, when it comes to the exams, to take your time, think. You, um, <laughs> I'm not doing it right now, but take your time, think you, through your answers clearly, and and put the information out as clearly as you can. Um, some of the scenarios can be quite challenging and can, you know, instantly make you think, oh, no, this is a problem, that's a problem. So it's true. You sort of look and you can see those problems, but you, you still need to take a moment to look at the whole picture and work out what the best approach is. So I think um, slow and steady when, with the oral exam can be quite helpful. Uh, there's a, a range of reference texts that are really, really quite good. Um, the AMH uh, is quite handy in terms of being, you know, a good, solid uh, reference text for medications. Um, the APF uh, can be quite good as well for some general counselling tips and advice for information that is really important for new patients uh, to be aware of. So that's uh, another good reference to consider as well. Um Hmm. Um, I suppose another one is something as simple as um, making contact with other uh, people who've been through the internship in recent years as well. Um, at the moment, we've got a intern pharmacist um, working for us who is um, is from Egypt. Uh, he's worked as a pharmacist over there. He's doing his um, placement now. Um, and a few years ago, we had an intern pharmacist who, uh, you know, did a university degree here in Australia. Australia. Did her intern yeah, yeah. Did, did, her, did her internship and she worked uh, a few years with us. Um, so she's been a good uh, uh, contact for him as well to sort of discuss the exams and um, her approach to things as well. 
Yeah, so it's um, to stay with fresh, you know, like, you know, people who have freshly cleared the exam. So yes, um, yeah. it's very benefiting and like, you know, we get the, I know the way things are being asked in the exam and, you know, what they were expecting, mm. any changes to the pattern and all that. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for such an insightful conversation. We're so, so, so happy you've accepted like you know to oh. have this conversation with us thank you so much Ross. see you soon thank no you no worries at all cheers you too thank you bye, bye.